Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. This is Coach Amy Hubbard. She has a she has a website called I Am Wholeness, and she is just an amazing person with just a wealth of knowledge. And today we're going to talk about plant medicine, and she's going to go into it into a deeper level and talk about different various types of plant medicine and different ways to help people naturally and holistically. So Amy, why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself, what you do, and mm -hmm. explain what you mean by plant medicine and what mm -hmm. types and so forth. Yeah, of course. So um, I am a, a hypnotist as well, a life coach. I actually do plant medicine integration, and I use a lot of different tools with everything I do. It's all about, you know, growth and healing subconscious programs. Um, I use breath work and energy healing, hypnosis, and all of these different things. So I've had a lot of experience with um, plant medicine. It has been a huge part of my growth over the years. And I'll just be really specific, just so your audience knows what I'm talking about here. When I say plant medicine, I'm sure many of you have started to hear a lot about psychedelics. There's many different kinds, but a, a popular one that people talk about a lot is um, psilocybin, magic mushrooms. You've got, you know, ayahuasca, um, which is from the Amazon. Um, there, there are so many different kinds. Even people talk about LSD. It's not a plant, but it's, you know, mm -hmm. anyway, so there's this, this big movement right now with psychedelics and people using psychedelics to have an expansive experience and also find healing, healing in the body, spiritual healing, you know, emotional healing. It, it really is all available. So what I want to say about it though, and one of the reasons why it's such a great thing to talk about is because it gets to be, um, you know, it's, it's not to be taken lightly, right? It's not something that you just pop off and go do by yourself or you find right. somebody to do it. There's a lot of information that you would want to know before you have, you know, you, you get to do an experience like that. And also if it is even for you, you know, it's not for everybody and I'm not going to say that it is right. It's right. definitely something that people need to really carefully consider for themselves to see if they're even a candidate for it. Right. So, right. yeah. Yeah. But can you explain to people what exactly psychedelics is? Because there are so many people out there that understand the basics because they read a lot of different materials on the internet. They know about the basic stuff that's brought up all the time. You have turmeric, you have lavender, you have this, you have that, but you don't hear a lot of information about psychedelics. You hear it here and there, but it's not really very broad on the internet unless you're looking for it and you're trying to grasp more information. So maybe you could educate people and, and explain to them what it is and you know, the benefits of, of using it in different situations and so forth. Yeah. So it's in the classified, it's classified as an entheogen. And so what that is, is it the medicine, it's completely different than something like lavender or turmeric, right? Which, which yeah. is, would be considered plant medicine because it's from nature. These are medicines that have been taken. I'm just going to say for thousands of years mm -hmm. in ancient times by um, different tribes and different people, not just tribes, but um, indigenous people to help them get information essentially to attain more knowledge. And so when, yeah. when you take a psychedelic, you're gonna go, you're gonna have what we call a journey. You're gonna go on like some kind of journey. You're gonna experience the world in a completely different way. Yeah. You know, and and that some of the medicines, plant medicines out there are more focused in the body, right? And mm -hmm. others are more like just going on this like you know, there's so there's infinite possibility for what the experience could actually be like. Um, but it is uh, it the medicinal purpose of it, right? That the, the point of mo the reason why most people do it, not just to have a good time, because a lot mm -hmm. of these medicines, while they are, they can be amazing. You can have amazing experiences on them. They can also really um, they have great healing properties, which means that sometimes during the journey, you are going through, you know, you are unwinding, let's say, mm -hmm. energetic patterns in your psyche, um, in your body, right? And that sometimes can be, it can be a real ride, if you know what I'm saying, yeah. right? So yeah. yeah, so that would be the main different differences between just like regular plant medicine and a psychedelic. Now, what type of um, conditions is it known for to help? 
Oh my gosh. So <laughs> different ones for different things, but I'm going to, I'm going to say like a, a, all of them are great for really good for spiritual expansion, mm-hmm. connecting with yourself beyond, I'm just going to use this terminology for lack of a better way of saying it. Yeah. Connecting with yourself beyond your human stories. There, it is, is a beautiful thing to experience yourself, like in the collective energy of sort of all that is, I'm getting very esoteric. I, yeah. I can't help myself, but really it, it, it drops you right. It can drop you right into that place. Yeah. It's great for healing depression. Um, ayahuasca, uh, psilocybin, there is actually science backed studies on this. It helps people heal a lot of depression, depression. People have depression for different reasons. I'm not going to speak to, you know, I know that there's clinical depression out there. People are on medication. And I just want to say this, I am not recommending this for anybody without you talking to your doctor. Okay. So just Mm -hmm. had to say that, um, (laughs) (laughs) when it comes to depression, a lot of people have come to ayahuasca or psilocybin for that, even actually psilocybin with my, just microdosing it. Because yeah. it actually helps rewire, rewire neuro pathways. Same with ayahuasca. Mm-hmm. But what it has the ability to do, which is so fascinating, is that while you're on the medicine, you can, it can show you a perspective that you didn't see before. Right. Sometimes what the medicine will do, well, especially ayahuasca does this, can take you back in time to when the sort of root cause like hypnosis actually that root cause time. And, but when you go back this time, there's like a, you have like, you're kind of, you're disassociated from it a little bit. Right. And so you can see from this different perspective and I, it's real almost hard to put this in words because it's not something that can just be, um, it can't just be put into words because it's a multidimensional experience. Right. The healing that's going on in your heart, you know, when something like that happens yes. in your energy body and even in your physical body. Yeah. And it can be, um, yeah, it can be really, really intense. It's some of the medicine is known for healing actual um, diseases in the body. Like yes. a lot of people gone to Iowa with, you know, very serious things and some chronic things. And that, over time, I'm not saying in one, you know, these things are done in succession, you know, sort of over time. Yeah. And it depends on who you work with. It really depends right. on who you work with. And when you use this, like, is it used? Um, is it, it, does it come in different forms? Do people mm-hmm. do people like powder form, pill form, smoke, yeah. do you smoke it? You know, like how does, how do people, is it the different ways that people can use it? Cause everyone has their own way yeah. and what they feel comfortable with, but what do you see most popular in, in, in the people that you work with? Okay. So it is different actually. So Aya is the same. Aya is actually um, made from a vine mm-hmm. and it's also made from a root and they're cooked by the shamans. They're mm-hmm. cooked, they're preyed on, it's loved, and it creates this liquid. So you drink it. Okay. And that, yeah, so that, and of course, everyone makes theirs a little bit different, but it's essentially the same. It has the same properties. Um, with magic mushrooms, it really depends. Some people powder them and put them in pills. Otherwise, you know, you can eat them in chocolate or right. they're just, you know, taken dried, but yeah, you take them that way. And when, when you're working with somebody, they help you. This is the thing they help you with. There's many different things that go into it. Yes. So I think I'll, yeah, tune yeah. into that now. It's not just about taking the medicine. Right. So I work with people on this level before they even do plant medicine. Like I right. help plant medicine integration. What it is when you're doing plant medicine, before you even go, you, you want to find the right person or the, yes. and the right setting to be served. Mm-hmm. The way that plant medicine is the most effective, the safest way, the way that you can experience the most healing is when you connect with the kind of people who've been, who know what they're doing. Right. I right. mean, it really gets to be like that. hundred percent. Yeah. They create a sacred space in these ceremonies for you. It's very important, you know, with the energy being clean, everyone having the safety, feeling safe. And also for you as the participant, the receiver to have that connection with the medicine before you even take it. Right. Right. 
there's a preparation that you get to go through before you do medicine. You want to really check in and make sure that you are ready to receive it. Yes. It's not for people that have had any kind of psychosis or anything like that. I just want to say that up front, you know, it's yeah. just not safe for that. Right. Um, for if you're going for, you know, a particular healing or whatever, it's what is a great thing to do is actually, if you can work with someone, this can be very helpful, but is to really connect with what your intentions are for the medicine. Yeah. Because plant medicine has a consciousness to it. It's not a drug. Mm -hmm. it, it really has like, there's a consciousness to it. And, and you'll, and when you, when you take it, that consciousness is working with your consciousness. Yeah. So this gets even more woo, but <laughs> it goes really it deep. It is very deep because the medicine is working in the subconscious zone, right? Yeah. And that is your body. And that's, you know, the feeling emotional part of you. It's not your, it's not the critical mind right, yeah. that we live in most of the time. Yes. And it's, it's your soul too, right? So, yeah. so that medicine is working with, with all of that, your soul, your, your subconscious, your body consciousness to create this healing. When you tune into what your intentions are and you get really clear and you're really setting that and holding that even before you go into the medicine, like you're, you're just connecting with the energy of the medicine, like through prayer or meditation, right? Yeah. You're setting yourself up for such a, a much more expansive experience yeah. with the medicine. So you're basically, you're, you're, um, you're doing therapy beforehand for preparation yeah. and you're really going, you're starting to learn about yourself with your coach. You're starting to go deep into yourself. It seems yeah. that you're starting to get to the root cause, start to understand yourself a little better, your conscious and subconscious. And then you're getting to the ready to the point. It seems where your body is ready to take the next step and to go even deeper and dive deeper into your subconscious yeah. where you really start to feel and understand what's going on behind the so-called cement yeah. walls. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that side that we don't really get to, you know, it's there, mm -hmm. but we have a very hard time really getting to that point. And so it opens you yeah. up to probably to a whole new world where you start yes. to understand yourself as a whole, and then you could fix those you know, those patches that are kind of a little open and cut. They do. And the medicine really helps you do that. And what, of course, we always get to do the work. It's never about something outside of us coming in. Right. But it right. gives us this ability to see and experience and have the knowingness so that when we do come out of it, and this is where more integration gets to happen. Yeah then we can take action on those, those things that we discovered. Right. Right. One thing that is incredibly important, it's something that I really have learned for myself over time. Um, I've just always been really super curious in life, which is what drew, drew me to medicine, right? And wanting right, to learn right. more about like more like, why am I here? What is this whole thing that we're in, right? Yes, and, so, yeah. and I've always been fascinated by any kind of healing like that was from the inside. And so when I started doing plant medicine, I didn't know any of the things that I'm talking to you about. I think I understood a little bit about the intention, but not, not taking the time and like really cultivating that with the medicine. And it was, it's been really interesting journey for me because <laughs> I, um, I think I'm just really relentless, right? I really just kept going for it because what I got to experience was a lot of healing and also a lot of what I knew was opening up into areas that have been shut down for a long time. Yeah. But that it wasn't pleasant. Like Stacey, it really wasn't like in the moment, like I could almost just barely handle it in the moment, but I knew, yeah. I just knew somewhere inside of me, I'm like, this is what gets to be healed. Right. Yeah. And then eventually I met a, a mentor of mine who is amazing. And she taught me a, about how to really work with the medicine Right. And even while you're on the medicine, how to use breath, sound and movement to really let the energy just flow and, and help yourself like install like more safety, you know, yeah. feeling mm -hmm. safer in the experience. And that, that has been such a, um, has been so life-changing for me, literally helped me do where I am now, even being a hypnotist and doing the work I do. I can honestly say that was like one of the biggest parts of it. 
How did you feel like when you, when you were taking psychedelics and you were getting the therapy and you were getting to really get in touch with your your uh, subconscious? Like, what major changes in your life did you really notice? Okay, so the first thing that I noticed was um, I started really taking action and following what I feel like I'm I'm meant to do. Yeah, huge shift in that, like mind blown shift in that. The other part of that, which I consciously went into plant medicine with was fear around being seen and heard. Yeah. Wow. That was huge for me. So I I went through several ceremonies and I really focused on that. And that just the year that I did that was like huge change. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't even be on the podcast right now. Hadn't I done that? Cause I wouldn't be on a podcast. (laughs) (laughs) you know? So yeah, I I will, I want to share that I have a friend who uh, he was in those ceremonies with me and he had actually had, um, a scare with cancer Mm -hmm. and he had it. He got to have a healing. He, he went to the doctors. Well, I will say that, but he got to have a healing through ayahuasca Mm -hmm. his cancer. And it was just, yeah, it was really, I was, I was pretty mind blown by that. I've seen a lot of people go through different kinds of healing. Yeah. I've heard many people have, have used psychedelics and has had a, a multiple positive effects in their life. It's really mm-hmm. opened their lives up to see things in a, in a totally different way and really appreciate things because they were able to really dig d- down deep into repressed emotions they didn't even realize that they had, you know, and they came up and they were able to go through the healing process, which was not easy because when right. repressed emotions come up, it's very painful yeah. and you have to face them. But once you get over that painful hump, it's like the world starts to change around you. Oh my gosh. It so does because we have these parts inside of us that when we, when we, we don't know that they're like exiled and they're not happy. Right. We just know that sometimes we're not happy and we don't like the way we behave and the things. Right. And then the plant medicine has the ability to open that up and start to bring those parts forth to be healed. Right. And so that can be very, um, but so worth it. Mm -hmm. I mean, so incredibly worth it. Like if you knew that you could, you know, start a healing process, like really open that portal up for yourself. And you knew that, Hey, for the next, maybe even six months, maybe this year, I'm going to be really in this, but on the other side of that, yeah. I'm going to step into who I truly am. I mean, I would say yes to that any day of the week. You yeah. Know? Yeah. 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 It's, it's pretty amazing. Like w- when you have to look at psychedelics, like what mm-hmm. makes it so unique compared to other plant medicine that's out there? Because you have so many people say, oh, this will help you. This will help you with this. And this can help you with this. You know, what makes psychedelics mm-hmm. so unique? Psychedelics call forth your own inner healer. Mm -hmm. They call it forth and you get to experience it and be conscious of it while it's happening. And that is pretty profound. That is pretty profound. And it takes you right into the world of the subconscious. And some others would say even spirit world and all of this, this connection that we have to so much more than what we just see in 3d reality. So it has this ability because you literally are kind of dropped into it. Yeah. You're in it. <laughs> you can smell it. You can see it. You can hear it. You can feel it kind of situation. So it is not yeah. a telling. It's not like therapy where you're telling and they're telling. No, you are actually in a multidimensional experience receiving healing. Wow. Yeah. Once you absorb the psychedelic and you take it Mm -hmm. and now you're in a, usually, is it a group setting that you're usually doing or one-on-one session, or you could have either, or either, or a lot of people do it in groups. Okay. And, and, and what's the process? Like, is is it, is it, is everyone experiencing and sharing their experiencing or is it, is it, um, are they starting it? Is it a really emotional like feeling? Because sometimes you could, if you're, if you're taking repressed emotions or if you're going into the subconscious and you've had a troubled life and, and it's all behind there, you could be very emotional, very traumatic for that individual. And so it's kind of like, it seems like a support group and people sharing and people helping each other. Yeah, it is. Okay. So I will, um, I'm going to just say that 
there, as long as you're doing it in a sacred way, let me just put that caveat in meaning yeah, yeah. space holders, the people who are serving or holding the space really sacred and, and, and in the highest and the best way you've already been doing work on yourself. So you're not just showing up and having the boogeyman come out of the closet, <laughs> right? You, you kind right. of know what you're working with, right? Yeah. Um, let's assume all of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You would be in a sacred space where everything is taken into account everything, the space, if it's a group, there's the spacing between the people who is sitting where, um, there'll be, and I'm just thinking like, especially when you do ayahuasca, even, even magic mushrooms, there's going to be, they're going to be using other plants like sage and burning, keeping it very clean energetically. Mm -hmm. They'll ask in most places, spaces that you are not just chit-chatting that you're not really talking that you are really in your process and people do have big processes sometimes like you yeah. said there's emotional things that come up the spaces that i prefer to be in are spaces where people can support people on that mm -hmm. and that's what that means is if you're going through a wave of something and it feels like, I don't know, you're having a big emotion that you're actually able to emote that because that's yeah. the point of it, but in a safe way, in a very right. safe way. Um, and, and so what it can look like, what I've seen it look like in the most beautiful way is a group of people. And then after we will, we will, there's a lot of prayers that are said, there's a lot of intention setting that is said, and yeah. I call it coding in the space. It's, mm -hmm with love and, and all good things. Right. And bringing. Yes. So once that is done, then we begin one by one to receive the medicine from the shaman. The shaman blesses all the medicine. Mm -hmm. The shaman makes the medicine too, prays over it. So you're taking very high conscious. Yeah. Stuff. You take it, you sit, you, you name your intentions again, and then you sit quietly and wait. And it usually it can take 30 to 45 minutes, sometimes a little longer. And in that time you were in silence and then the waves start to pick up and you will notice in the group mm -hmm. that as the waves start to move, you might get a person, I don't know, somewhere and they're having a big experience. And then you'll yeah. notice there's like a wave of it that goes around to some others. Yeah. And because we're all in it together, even though we're not directly necessarily interacting, we are all holding that space for each other as well yeah. as ourselves. Right. Right. The people who are there with you in the medicine, they are attending to everybody. And if, and if people need to talk and there needs to be, that's being handled. As the medicine, as the, the thing, you know, we start to conclude, we all come together and we all, there's a lot of integration that gets to happen. Right. Now, is this something that you do on a regular basis or is this like a monthly basis? Like how often do, do is this treatment performed? It really depends, but I personally speaking, I don't do it on a, I mean, I've done it. Like I don't do it on a monthly basis. It's a lot. Like it's a big, yeah. because after you have these experiences, you need to go integrate. Mm -hmm. So if somebody, for example, is really focusing, maybe they have a serious health issue or they're really focused on drug addiction because right. these medicines, I forgot to mention that these medicines are so powerful for helping heal addiction, believe really? it or not, actually. Yeah. Wow. And this, there are studies on this. You can look at this, especially with ayahuasca. Um, there's another plant medicine called iboga. Mm -hmm. Very, very powerful medicines for plant addiction, healing it. Like iboga yeah. has an 85%, what I'm not gonna, I can't really say this word, but it has an 85%, it's not cure, but like of people who- It promotes it, the yeah. it promotes healing. It promotes that much healing. So people, um, you know, it's just a very hot, that's, there's nothing on this planet in the medical world that has that for a, like- for heroin addiction or yeah. opioids. It's very challenging. So um, if people are on a, on a quest, like they're really healing something, often what they do is they'll work with a particular facilitator or shaman, and they may be doing like a three, a deal where they're doing it every monthly, or even they're in the Amazon working with the shaman for three months. I mean, it really, like, there's so many things available. Yeah. But otherwise I feel like what really happens is like somebody gets, they hears about it. Right. And then mm -hmm. hopefully they go to the right place and they go, they're in the space and they have an experience, for example, sitting with ayahuasca for maybe four ceremonies, three ceremonies. And then, you know, they, they go with what they've learned from that and they yeah. integrate it in the ideal world. That sounds amazing. That sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. And 
and it and you learn so you learn skills and you're practicing these skills and these coping skills probably get you through life and, and help you so you can move on and live a happy healthy productive life it seems it really does i mean th one of the things one of the, the biggest things from plant medicine that i've learned is like going into the level of discomfort and discomfort by the way doesn't have to be because you've had something bad happen in your childhood and that comes up just the discomfort that you can sometimes feel when you're, you have so much energy inside of you and you have this yeah. like such an expansive feeling and you're not used to it. Yeah. You know? So like you, so one of it's really, it's, I guess what I could say, it's taught me how to sit with what is at a mm -hmm. higher capacity, whether mm -hmm. that is like something that's uncomfortable or even sometimes people have a hard time holding that much joy. Right. I mean, yeah. we're all, where we are in our journey. So yeah, it's, it has that ability to really teach and imprint your nervous system with new ways of being. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. I think, I think it's so important for people to learn different ways of, because there's so many different positive ways that you could heal your body and, yes. you know, and, and I've heard so much about psychedelics, you know, and I haven't personally tried it, but I've heard so many positive stories of people who have gone through the, the pre-healing process and then have gone through the ceremonies and then have the afterward effect. And, and they have really changed their life around tremendously. And, you know, it's, it's important that people find the right places and the right yeah. people to do it with is there any suggestions because you know there's so many there's so many people out there saying you know I'm this I'm that you know I could do this and you know and and, and you know they see one trend in thing and all of a sudden everybody can do it yeah. is, you know what are the red flags maybe or what are the things to look for so they find they find the right person to work with so they could actually have a positive effect because yeah you know, you, you don't want someone going to the wrong person and, and, you know, it could just be a horrifying experience. Could be horrifying. Absolutely. You want to look for people out there who, um, are, are places too that offer integration programs so that when you, they are really like, there's some places that are great that you would go to and they would have you in classes and workshops before you're going into the medicine. You know, they help you prep with the diet. You've got to do a diet. I, I didn't even get into that yet. I will, yeah. but you know, when you're doing, when you're working with plant medicine, um, you would get more information on this through the, the person you're working with. If you're not, they're not the person for you. Right. Because the diet's really important. It's important to cleanse before you go. It just makes it easier. It just makes it so that the plants can work with your intention more and not have to focus so much on detoxing your body. Yes. Yes. Um, the, a lot of these plants have purgative effects to them, which is, you know, you will get rid of stuff. Right. And that that's actually, it may sound horrible to some people, but honestly, it's very effective and it works and it doesn't last like in out done. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's, um, but if you are, if you have done your dieta, your body's just that much more ready for it. it makes it a lot easier on you. I, you know, so yeah, yeah. You look for that. You look for a place that talks about integration. You look for places where it's like, they're not going to have like a hundred people there and, you know, a couple of shamans. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That's not a good idea. You look for places where you can hear them talking about integration and safety. Yeah. Because you, you get to feel safe when you're in this situation. You need to know that everything is taken care of, that you're okay. Mm -hmm. Because when you go into medicine, if you, from before you even taken the medicine, you're not feeling safe. You don't know if you're going to be cared for, right? How are right, you going right. to be when you're on the medicine and you're opened up? Exactly. You need to know that they're there for you, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I would look for places where, you know, I've heard different, different things, but about, it depends on you. You know, you really need to find out like, what's the spacing like there. If you're the kind of person who's super sensitive, mm -hmm. being in a big group is not going to be your thing. Right. Go to a place that has a smaller, you know, setting. Um, you ask them about the medicine, who makes the medicine. Mm, very good. No, if they don't know, and they're just getting it from somewhere, not a good sign. Yeah. Not a good sign. Yeah. So those are really really, really important things that I look at. I mean, right now, um, I, I have worked with different mentors on this, but there's this one, um, place that I know of in Peru, ugh, forget the name at the moment. 
anyone can reach out to me, by the way, if they have any questions about this, mm-hmm. but the, the woman who runs it, she works with shamans and she's a somatic healer. Like to me, that is a full body. Yes. Anybody who, you know, she is, she understands about the nervous system and feeling safe and all the different processes that you get to go through, through your yeah. healing. So those are the kind of people that I look to. Yeah. There's, um, many popular places all over. You can go online and find out, but you, re- um, a lot of those places you need to, I would get a referral. I would always say, get a referral if right. you don't know, cause they're not all safe. Yeah. I think that's an excellent, excellent suggestion. You know, a lot of people don't think of it, but getting a referral is very important, you know, and they, a lot of times people will say, get at least, try to get at least three referrals if you can, because, yeah. you know, you really want to make sure you're stepping into the right facility and you're getting the right care, mm-hmm. especially when you're at that vulnerable stage where you want help, you're prepping for it. Yeah. And you, you know, you're, you're at a vulnerable stage and you want to make sure that you're getting the proper care. You do, you do. And everyone's also different. I mean, I've known people that backpacked out into the Amazon had, you know, their roommate was a tarantula, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, you. Well, okay, where I am in my luxury suite. No, mm-hmm. but I mean, it's, you know, um, it is good to just really take everything into an account. You know, you don't need to add new stuff into your nervous system, uh, you right. know, be in a place that you feel really good about and super, super comfortable. It's very important. Right, right. And is there any particular type of area that you suggest, like when you say, ask them where their medication, where they get their medications, is there specific things that you look for, like that you feel is better, like, you know, certain types of medications, certain types of areas where they should, you know, well, I would say medicine, it's not medication because it's the plant, yes. medicine, yeah. how they make it. I mm-hmm. find out how, like who, who makes it like, you mm-hmm. know, that's really the question that I ask who makes it. And if the places I've been, they're like, oh, the sh- head shaman and her daughters make it, um, you know, this shaman makes it. And, you know, I just, I like to know that kind of stuff. I think it's really, really important. There mm-hmm. are people out there who are serving plant medicine, um, most people are good people, but there are people out there who are not doing it for the right reasons. And right. You just want, that's everything is consciousness. The food you yeah. eat is consciousness, right? So exactly. you want to make sure it's good, that it's a high quality. That's what you're taking into your being. So it's really important to bring your consciousness, you know, your awareness. Yeah. So what is it? Who, who makes this? And you if know? you're, you're prepping to get, to go through this process and you want to go on to psychedelics and you want to work on your subconscious for the diet part, you know, I probably, the sooner, the better is probably best. Yeah. So what would you suggest? Mm-hmm. Like, what are some examples of good cleansing oh, techniques? Yeah. So it's, um, eating mostly vegan or at least having, it doesn't have to be vegan, vegan, but um, I would say that's great. Actually, if you can, if that's not available to you, cutting out red meat and pork for sure. Yeah. No pork. Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. Um, you can have chicken. I would and just do clean. Don't, don't eat processed food, you know, clean it up. Uh, I would, they say not to do coffee. <laughs> so yeah, cut the coffee. I would say that about a month before you should really start a good cleanse for yourself. And that week before, absolutely like be really strict and absolutely no alcohol. If you are drinking, I would say cut it a month before. However, if you cut mm-hmm. it just a week before you would be fine. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of these psychedelics, I just want to throw this in here because it's really important. If you are on medication for anything, you would need to get it cleared because yeah. you you can't do psychedelics on a lot of different kinds of medication. It's just not safe. Right. Right. So if you are, you know, some people I've known had to get off medication for depression and they had mm-hmm. to work with their doctor on that. You have to work with your doctor on that. And that was a slower process that took time. And then once they were fully off, then they were able to do it. I'm not recommending that for everybody. I'm just saying right. that's what some people have done. And um, so these are the things that really get to be looked at. You know, yeah. it's a beautiful thing though. It's your commitment to yourself. When you, mm-hmm. when you do these dietas, you're saying, you know, I'm really, I'm here for this. Like I'm showing up for myself and mm-hmm. it becomes a beautiful part of the process. Even if it's a little bit more difficult in the beginning. Yeah. 
It sounds amazing. It sounds really amazing. And I like the fact that you, you know, explain to people that they can't be their own doctor. If they're taking medication for a long period of time, a lot of these medications, you know, your body becomes addicted to it. So the doctor has to, you know, slowly wean you off it. So if you're going to, you know, use psychedelics and you're going to go through the process, you have to really work with your doctor and get to the point where he weans you off that way you could try and just make sure weaning you off is safe, you know, because everybody's different. Everybody's body reacts differently and it we know it it may be amazing for some but for others it may not work and and because they they may have a different type of depression you know it might might be further you don't know what the situation is but they have to work with their doctor and, and really thoroughly talk about it with their doctor and make sure that you know they are a candidate for it you know and the doctor will know yeah. You know. I mean, a lot of these medications anyway, if you even start taking them, they start slowly with you for a reason because they are changing your brain chemistry. So that yeah. just, yeah, that gets to be really looked at <laughs> when you're doing these things because, because psychedelics, they work with your brain chemistry. They're, they're with the, working with the serotonin and all, and all that. Yeah. So that's why that's actually a lot of reasons why you're having the experience you're having. Right. So yeah. it's really, really important to, to know that, you know, but in the right places and given you're the right candidate, you are, it's, it's a beautiful, it gets to be such a beautiful experience. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, if you had to emphasize a couple of things that we've talked about today, what are some important factors that you'd like to emphasize about today's discussion? I'd like to emphasize integration, integration, integration when it comes mm-hmm. to plant medicine. I would say that um, it's the number one thing. It's like, um, you know, you, you get, you get the secrets. I'm going to exaggerate here a little bit, but you get Mm -hmm. the secrets to the universe and then you just forget to write it down. So you don't do anything with it. Right. Versus you, you, you get some secrets to the universe, you write it down and you start to take action on it each day, you know, like, and it starts to become a part of who you are. Like that's what gets to happen. And it can happen quite quickly. That's the thing with, with plant medicine is it accelerates all this. As long as you are able to integrate and start to apply it. And the best way to do that is to, to take it, to do it, to sit with the right people that offer these things. Really. It's, um, it's been everything for me. It was such a life changer for me when I started doing that. And I think that's wonderful. And I think you made a very good point just now is that I've met people that have done things and they they think by just doing it and not taking action and not changing and applying it to their life. And then they wonder why it's not working for them. Well, like you said, write it down, start making changes. For some people, it might be faster. For some people, it might be a slower process, but changes will come as long as you integrate them into your life. You have to apply them in your life. You can't just do it and think, okay, now my life is going to be different. You have to apply what you're learning to it as well. And that's when you see, you know, the magic starting to happen. So true. And the critical mind, after you have a big experience on plant medicine, it's like, Mm -hmm. oh my gosh, oh, that was so amazing. And then 48 hours later, your critical mind gets really strong. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's really, really important that, you know, you are able to, to take that time to integrate and be like, wait, no, I know what's truth. I can feel truth in my body. Yes. Right. And, and you know what I mean? So yeah, that you're right. That's how the magic gets to happen. I love that. I love that. Now tell me about the different services that you have on your website and different Mm -hmm. things that you could do to help people. Yeah. So I do do plant medicine integration. I'm a, I'm a hypnotist. I'm a breathwork facilitator. I'm a life coach. So I bring kind of bring it all together, depending on what people need, right. What what they're coming to me for. If someone is looking for plant medicine integration and you can catch me before you go into ceremony. Awesome. That's, I love to help people. And if you've already done plant medicine and you didn't know to, to find somebody, I can work with you as well. Really. Um, it is a, uh, a, a magical experience where the journey gets to start before you even get to the medicine. I love it. I love it. Now, do you have anything that you offer on your website to people who come on? Do you have anything free or any type of services that you offer to people? Well, I have a couple of different things. Um, I have, um, well, actually it's getting done right now. It's, it's not up yet, but I'll be offering something that is a, um, a called vibe your purpose. Oh, I like so that. They can go on my website. It'll be up in the next four days. 
five year purpose. If you just, if they were to email me or find me on Instagram at AMI underscore wholeness, I mm-hmm. could send it to you. But basically it's a, it's, it's breath work. It's a little bit of breath work and a lot of um, bringing in and coding in different, like your high vibe in your body though. Yeah. So it's, it's very, very powerful to help you create your intention to start to be the vibration of your purpose. Also very helpful, even though I don't name this for plant medicine, because it starts teaching your body how to hold a very high vibration which is what happens when you take plant medicine. Right. Oh, yeah. that's amazing. That's amazing. And uh, uh, mention your website once again, so people sure. know your website. Mm-hmm. I am wholeness.com. Excellent. Yeah. And I just want people to know that you have a website. You're on our, you have your own series with us. So if yeah. anyone types your name in and they look for your web, for your podcast, they can find your podcast. You're on our podcast community. They'll see all your podcasts listed. And Amy has amazing podcasts on our series that you could learn from each one of them. Amazing things and amazing um, tools and techniques and different ways of coping with life. You know, because a lot of times we read, we were talking about this before the show. Sometimes you read so much on the internet and a lot of the stuff we read isn't accurate or true. So you really want to get information from the experts and you really want to understand, you know, positive ways of changing your life and being able to improve your life in all areas of your life and making sure that you're learning from people who have the knowledge and the expertise. And Amy is one of them. So check out her stuff, check out her website, check out her podcast. And she is here to help. You'll find her on the social networks. And I'm so glad you came today to talk about about psychedelics. And I really hope this is something that will people will take an interest in and maybe look further into it because it, 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 you know, I've heard amazing things about it. You've gone really into detail. And if anyone wants to learn more about it, they can contact you on your website or your social media. Mm-hmm. But thank you so much for coming on the yeah. show. Thanks. You have a great day. Thank you. You too.